I'm at the table. And I'm gonna start out with, um, do you have a narrative or anything to provide with anybody? Okay, that's fine. And I'm just gonna make um, a recommendation off the top here that to um, reinstate the director of Rex salary back to the, of the proposed amount for the 2016 And that includes 131. One 131. That includes the non-aligned raise. The non-aligned raise is with the CSBA contract, yeah. correct? Yes. So I'm just starting it off there. I, I'm good to with start that. To I think, I think that sounds great. Right. We did it with the clerk. I think we do it here, too. Uh, so that was a deep, that's an increase of $5,000. No. And we'll go back into this. Well. From the recommended to the requested. 131. I'm sorry. Here, fine. If I correct, it'll be a plus 5,000 back into it. Okay. 131. 131. 131. The requested amount had been 62211. It's recommended at 57211. So yes, Tony, it is 5,000. So it's a 3% increase. 60,000. Yeah. 60, it's based on the CSEA contract, contract for non line employee. Any comment, discussion? Sounds good. Okay, so we're missing John, and he usually has to calculate these numbers as we go along. So when he does get back in here, we will have to stop for a calculation. Is he gonna, we going to let this kid first, or are we going to ask questions? Yes. I can do that one when we um, well, he's getting the numbers. Are we going to have him give a speech, or are we going to start asking questions? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm, I'm just going to do this committee report. Oh, okay. Because I started the narrative with that. No them. problem. <laughs> I'm just trying to move all. Let's do that sugar. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 Compensation to the recommended compensation. <coughs> Budget lines to be added. Any question? The question. Question? Question. To, back to the requested compensation? Yes. To the yes. recommended compensation. No, no, no the requested. No. Question. Oh, you can say it. Okay. Right. Ms. Lee, you. To amend. No, sorry. It's, it's, it's like a Bill nice Harris. messy report, okay? For hey, you want me to sign off on that? Yeah, To amend the Director of Recreation Compensation to the requested compensation budget lines to be added. We're reinstating the Director of Recreation back to the requested amount rather than the recommended amount. I have a motion? Motion. motion. Second. Second. We just don't know what it is we would have to put benefits. Oh, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Okay. That's what we figured. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
committee report is coming around to the finance committee members, please sign and return to me. Thank you. Okay, that's how I wanted to start out, so now I'll pass it back to you. Great, thank you. Just to give you a little bit of history, um, you know, when as many as other departments were hit a number of years ago, our department was hit as well. You know, we lost essentially the deputy, we lost our full-time clerk. Fortunately, the last two years we've been able to have a part-time clerk in our department uh, with the fourth largest individual department. And uh, although I think Mike might have just <coughs> misspoke there. He wasn't the, the lowest paid of the, <laughs> the four largest departments. But um, um, there's a lot that goes on in our 11 parks, our three community centers, you know, our seasonal beach and pool. Um, there's a lot that happens. We just finished uh, a great co-ed youth uh, flag football program up at Deep Stadium. The kids love playing under the lights. We are in the midst of starting our 317, 370 player youth basketball program. We have our ongoing adult sport league of, uh, four, of 40 fall winter volleyball uh, teams, men, women, co ed. We play three nights a week. Our over 30 basketball will be starting tomorrow night. Um, so there's a lot that happens, you know. Within the department, and of course, our, our after school programs at the Rondout and the Hodge Center. Uh, a couple of our, our people that work with us uh, at the Hodge and also who also work with us during the summertime. Um, you know, just wonderful staff that come each and every day. And I, I think that's one of the, the big things that we have employees that look forward to and come to work every day to serve not only the kids but the kids, the, the people within our community. You know, with our basketball and flag football programs, it's, it's volunteers. We have, you know, 37 teams. We have essentially 70 coaches with that program that volunteer their time. Uh, flag football, uh, you need kids, you need teams. It's 16 coaches that are volunteering their time. Along with our own staff, who have had to take on the task this past fall of, of coaching a couple of teams themselves. So well, kudos to uh, to the staff who, who have done that this past fall, this past youth flag football season. And um, you know, we're fortunate to have program staff that really care about the people that we serve uh, from preschool age right on up to our active uh, older adult population. Uh, you know, Mike is uh, doing, you know, having the expertise and the equipment and the personnel to do infrastructure projects is a bonus to the city. And the building down at the beach, just completed, finally getting done with the, with the, uh, the paving of the Hasbro Park that has been done. Um, as I tell Mike all the time, whenever he does roads, it's great, you know, the roads are great. It's almost too good because people tend to not uh, have to go on the obstacle course and have them. And uh, you know, we just hope that people respect and maintain what's been done up at Hasbro Park um, with the new paving that's been done up there. Um, that being stated, uh, I will, I'm open to whatever questions the committee may have. I just want to give an update on the committee report that went around. Um, the estimated financial impact to return to the requested compensation was $6,308. For those that are punching numbers, $6,308. Does anybody want to start any conversation with any questions to Kevin or Steve in regard to Parks and Rec? Tony. Do we have any anticipated retirements in 2016? <laughs> <laughs> you took my question. Yeah, right, right off the top, didn't you? We waited to tell us like that. Uh, potentially there's four people. Four people, yes. 
four people. Can you elaborate uh, if any of yours or you wouldn't mind saying? Um, I could be one. We have our working supervisor in the maintenance department that is indicated. And then uh, uh, two of our rec leaders. My question to John, if Kevin was to be one of the director, do we have money to cover this retirement payout? Because um, <clears throat> right now, because looking at mine item 105. What page on Tom? 130. Retirement accumulation. We have zero recommended. So I'm just trying to figure out if we have these four retirements or we're going to have money to cover. Because there's, 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 four, there's $400,000 to contingency budget, which all the retirees uh, come out. Oh, come yeah, out. Come from there. He doesn't yeah. have a policy that he the department has cool. to send a communication and come to the council to ask for the money at a contingency for the retirement. To, to the extent that departments can cover some of it from within our own we recommend that. I mean, yeah. you know, where the, where some titles you can, some titles you can't, some titles you can have a a, a, a delay in back long <coughs> with this one you can't. Um, some people who retire have used a lot of their time, really don't have much of a while, others do. But we take all that into consideration when we're developing the contingency budget. Okay. Uh, this year, $400,000. It's been lower in some years, but. These are people you just feel might retire. They haven't done paperwork or anything, have yeah. they? I mean, I'm sure, I know a couple of them that we hear about frequently and they yeah. end up staying anyway. So you said four, and what were the four? I missed that when you had said that. You said two rec leaders. Two rec leaders, maintenance supervisor. And a working supervisor? Maintenance supervisor. Am I still on, on the table? Sure, Tom. Right. Page 132. You have seasonal employees of 50, you have for 73,000 and recommended 59. This, how much is. How much is that in maintenance? They're all maintenance staff in season. You know. So is this what is what are we talking about? Mowing in, in set or set? Exactly. We, okay. Cleaning, cleaning up <clears throat> stuff that's left around. At approximately nine dollars an hour. You know, it um, some of the, the returning ones obviously they're a little bit more because they get compensated. With the uh, union, with the CSEA contract, um, but the minimum wage is going up again next year. Um, it, you know, right now I know that we are, I believe we're sixty-three thousand uh, to date in that season line item. Um, we have one, two, three pay periods left, and three individuals that are. Working presently, or work, you know, they work uh, up to 24 hours. So uh, nine dollars an hour. Ah. Okay. So you know, it, it it's um, it's going to take probably stay on the same path that we're on presently. Fifty uh, fifty-nine thousand dollars are. Our chores, our tasks, our duties are not going to change. Uh, I, I think 59,000 is too low. And how many seasonal employees was that again? Um, roughly there's 14 from the time that, that we can start them in, um, in April. And we're trying to delay that start time just make sure we have money at the end but you know this year we're in a position where we there was a uh, there was a big increase from the union contract that some maintenance staff got so so it's able to when is there a season right through december so. well there's only three people that stay on board after uh september 30th so it's really april 1st to september 30th yeah. Has it in the past been done with less than 14 people? Um, 
there's a lot out there, Marianne. It's 14 people, you know, and that includes some people that we left at the end of August where they went back to college or their high school age and going out for fall sports. There's a lot to do out there. Uh, we'd like to have the grass not grow at a certain time. We'd like to have, uh, you know, trash be picked up by people and instead of dropping it next to the trash cans and, and you know, all over the park. So, um, can it be done in less than 14? I'm not sure how efficient it can be done for less than 14. Are they assigned specific tasks or you put them where they need it? Well, they generally go, you know, a crew will go, the, um, the mowing, weed whacking crew, they will stay together pretty much. That three or four person crew will stay together and rotate around. And again, we've picked up. You know, we've been asked to, uh, to pick up additional duties with uh, city-owned properties. Um, we have, you know, we've done one in your ward earlier in the season. Uh, we've done downtown in your ward. We've done um, city throughout the city. What, what well, because they are you know, the street they're working on it right oh, now. Oh, you're right? talking about, so okay. They're, they're, they're I think they are actually building it, so that's part of your job. Okay, so they're abandoned tax reports, whatnot, we own them. Right, right. The city is taking them on. Up by Mary Ann, I know we took care of the uh, property up uh, Lincoln Street. Yes. Oh, Tammany Street. Tammany Street. Take care of cemeteries to go up all yeah. in the avenue. Yeah, and, and again, those are properties that the, the city is not all the way. Yeah, and so the you know the uh, building and safety division gets requests to have the neighbors complain, so, and that's something that we've taken on. Whether that will be, I don't think that'll be part of you know what Mike and I, I don't want to speak for Mike. Well, that's what I was just going to ask. So these yeah, fourteen that'll be part days. of his work. Uh, his seasonal crew that will come on uh, to assist with that? I don't know, but you know, when, when we're doing those properties, we're not doing things in the parks or right, at our recreation facilities. So, yeah, it takes away from uh, from what we would be or could be doing in the parks if we're working on various properties. So these 14 people are aligned where? Within parks and rec stuff? Yeah. But could report to Michael. Well, you know, we've, we've worked it. Um, you know, unofficially, we've worked together before. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be getting calls about leaf pickups soon. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to snow plowing and picking up Christmas trees. Um, you know, his. You know, you talked about Pat Crosby, the city electrician. He's worked in. He's worked uh, uh, just down at the Rondout Center, uh, taking care of lights there. You know, he works in at uh, wherever we need the electricity like, electrician the hot center. One minute we share services within departments. Is how it should yeah. it should so, be. You know, he's, he's, and I, I, I think we've, we've worked, you know, uh, cooperatively together on, uh, on the, the majority of things. You know, Pat's done, uh, you know, electrical work up the hot center. We make sure we can finish that up. So, but, um, uh, so, you know, the 14 seasonal people that we have, you know, we're, there's a crew that just worked at Gallup Park. There's a crew that uh, would go down to, with a, with a full-time labor, they'd go to the Rondout Center in the summer and to the Hot Center with additional seasonal person, and then they would go on. They'd go up to Foresight to make sure that was done, especially if, as we're doing our, our summer programs. You know, we've got to make sure that the places where the summer parks programs are held, that those areas are picked up, maintained before the, the people come at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the, the ball field crew. You know, hey, four days a week we're uh, we're you know that crew is maintaining you know, two or three fields. In addition to Lauren Park, the ball field that we do in conjunction with the school district. You know, we provide they use their Lauren Park field for their uh, the freshman baseball team. Are you compensated by the school district? No. No. They just use it. But we maintain it. We maintain. You know, we, we work with uh, Town of Ulster. Um, one day a week we use their ball field down on Orlando Street. Um, 
but we, we go and maintain that and um, you know we work with them to uh, they come back and they don't charge us for the, the, the electricity that's used on the lights of the ball field uh, but their summer program comes and uses our pool so you know, I think we work cooperatively with them uh, their their heavy roller has uh, rolled our ball fields before the season begins we work in front of Petron all that so Again, as Mike, I, I think I heard him say that you know he has a, a good working relationship with the with the other municipalities close by, and that's not only with with what DPW does, but also with what we do as well. Do we still have a bath master? No longer. Okay, I was just curious. Right. Oh, yeah. Overtime, Kevin. And see, it looks like it's just straight across the board, but. What is that overtime? Because what is? Are you talking about in the uh, parks? Uh, one thirty-two. Yeah, one page. Yeah. One o three. Uh, <coughs> or page one thirty-two. But pretty mind. much every weekend from mid-April to now, we have a at least one, if not two people, that go out to different parks uh, on Saturday and Sunday. Now that that's dependent upon. If things are rented out, okay, mm -hmm. but they have to uh, pick up trash. They have to prep facilities. Uh, you know, with the stone building when uh, if that's rented, which is rented often, and if we get that back in a rented uh, condition soon. Um, but they go out every weekend. We have we have um, a, you know one full timer. And during the summer season, we can put a seasonal person out there. Our full-time guys, we, there's, there's work all the time. When it comes to uh, you know, renting of the, the Murphy Center or the Rondette Center, we have a staff person that has to be in the building. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's plenty of overtime that is okay. charged to that line. And I think we've talked about this in the past, that if somebody's renting out, say, the Rondette Center, and you have to have a staff person there, is that overtime of charge back to the people that are renting it out? It is. In most cases, it is. Depends upon. In most cases, it is. They will pay for the use of the facility plus the related overtime costs. And it's. They say, oh, I'm only going to be there two hours. So they get a, a three hour well, overtime. Well, would you use seasonal workers sometime to. Uh, it's always, for that, it's always given to the, uh, the full time. Full time. Yeah. That's contractual, right? Yeah. yeah. Where is that shown at on this? Where is that shown? Is that shown? It's it is. Uh, if you go to, uh, I'll show you uh, Midtown Center, 137. User fees? User fees, yes. Okay. And I can tell you that I think we should increase that line item at least $1,500 because I think we're we're oh, so not seeing that, that uh, at this point. Um, I think I ordered closer to six thousand dollars in user fees that have come in, and again, that's for groups, organizations. You know, uh, we had the postcard show two weekends ago. We had the train show last month. Uh, we have a show this coming Sunday. We have another show Saturday and Sunday before Thanksgiving. So. Um, What's the fee that you charge for that? It's two twenty-five for the use of the facility mm -hmm. per day, plus the overtime cost. Um, I can tell you the group that's using the um, just because I know it off the top of my head. Um, Twenty-first, twenty-second of November. That's Saturday and Sunday. They paid twelve one thousand two hundred fifty dollars for Saturday and Sunday. Like you're factoring the uh, water bill, the utility. Well, that's the user fee. Then okay. it's the overtime. It's it's part of that. Jim, what was your question? No, I said so. It sounds like you're gonna be over six thousand. You only have what you did four, so you should probably increase it by two. Increase it to yeah, well, two thousand. Yeah. The other thing I comment is we're coming up short some other ones, so I don't know if I want to. Leave a cushion is what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would just because you know you have some others that are all right. A little longer. So we're gonna leave that at four and not go to six. How many other ones do you have like that in your job? <laughs> well, most of them most of them are most of them are short. Okay. So, All right. All right. Thanks for that recommendation, Kevin. We're gonna leave it at four. That looks
looks like per our comptroller. John has another user. Um, just, just a question about it. We know that, I mean, I already have requests for next year. A lot of these groups do it. Well, it, it, that's fine, but then I would recommend bringing other ones down. You know, because as of right now, there's a lot, most of them are under, like that one's over, but a lot, try to look at this globally. Okay. A lot of your recreation fees are, okay. I've got one that's right now 15 short. You know, it's yeah. in another 15,000, other ones that are, you know, so I think if we look at <coughs> user fees in total, we're going to fall sure. significantly short of budget mm -hmm. in the rec department rather than <coughs> over. So I recommend you, you keep it where it is. Don't stretch one individual one to the max and then leave other one short. Jim, is this related to this conversation? This bill has a question to No, it's, a, it's, a, it's on the same page. But it's a different one. Is yours? Oh, yeah, we mentioned that um, that stone building, that lower house front to me. Mm -hmm. And what is there a lot of renovation to be done inside? Because okay, I thought we had some renovation. What's up? I thought we had approved some renovation about like eighteen, maybe two years ago. What we were working on something. But that seems like a that seems like a good spot that I don't think a lot of people know about. And yeah, they know about it. They know. They, yeah, that gets rented. Oh, it does. Okay, I didn't know. know. It's been closed since September. Yeah, we just okay. had some issues inside that have to be taken care of. Yeah. But that wasn't, I think you were talking about, about the, the painting. It has I thought the architect bought the stone house. There was some, I thought there was some plumbing issues or something. Something was, I thought we were taken care of, but maybe, maybe it was the paving. But I, I just remember the stone house being addressed or something. Roof, windows, I, I'm not sure. There was something. So I'll have to look back and see. Because at the time, I think well, it was about time because that, that's, a, that's a gold mine for rentals and for our recreation. And we hold our summer program there as well. And what, what's the fee for that? It's uh, $95 for city resident and $35 for non resident. That's all day or something? Is that an hour listed? Well, so they're they the they there three hours or eight hours. Okay. Right. Because you know the shutter is missing down there. So I don't that. Yeah, that happened after uh, <laughs> oh, a night. A rental. <laughs> Jim, you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. It's just on the capital outlay on the okay. same page 132 there. Right. On the uh, 302, 305, 306, 307, all the uh, cut and bar, block and bar, <coughs> yeah. they will receive $1,500 and we will settle that. That's just having a little bit of capital money to form pretty much maintenance improvements that the well, we cannot discuss. Okay, now what was the uh, contracted services that you requested 55 and getting like zero? Was there something you were. That was. Um, what line is that? It's uh, 301. 301. Oh. Page one thirty mm -hmm. in the park. Yeah. Seven one zero. <coughs> Page one thirty two. What was that, John? Well, it was something that was moved over to the bond request. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So it was addressed, but in a different. Um, I, I'm sure I have in my folder. Okay. And you got the was, in the camera. It's uh, 7,500. So it was moved over to the capital. Pool. The pool roof. Yes, that's what that is, Jim. Okay. Sound familiar, Captain? The pool roof. Yep. Okay. What was minor equipment? It went up thirty-five hundred. The construction materials and supplies. What's that? Uh, yeah. minor equipment. We're still in parts, right, Jim? Yeah. yeah. Three of two. Just down from zero one. It's actually four set times four times. Don't like those. Four set grand roofs. Four set times bathrooms. Fifty five thousand. The 55,000 with the, um, it's not the roof. 
It's the four side bathroom. Are you planning on fixing something, building something? That's something <coughs> Tennis bathroom, and that's not the no. plan. Mike, Seth, we class. Do you have fancy material? Do you have fancy in there to raise some of those things in the outfield? Yeah, that's all right. That's uh, that was one of the issues before. Uh, so then we got the fifteen hundred. Also, the fifteen hundred down might be used. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's just for. I mean, that's for the park. Who's it for? Park. Well, they do from second base. Just in front of the house. Sorry, I'm going to make sure they do it right. What was the um, answer down there? Did you hear that the fifty-five thousand is not for the Andrade pool? Oh, sorry. Right. No, it's for the four side bathrooms for the tennis courts area there. And the, uh, so it didn't move out the bond. It yeah. went, we went for consideration for bond. Okay. Yeah. About the tennis courts, was there a donation given for that? Is that just yeah, a right. Let me just bring it up to speed on that. Um, if that's so that's what we did. I'm going to run the. Move on to the. We don't. That's what we don't. Okay. Um, Volleyball. Three weeks ago. <laughs> three weeks ago, Dennis Larios, uh, Greg Swansea, uh, Kevin Madonna from the Mid Hudson Valley Tennis Association, we met at Dennis's office to um, to go over, you know, where we were, where we could be going to with with the project, the tennis court project. Dennis was asked to put together um, basically a spec of doing it, uh, taking down all the fence fabric and the poles over there because they're not in great shape to begin with, and essentially milling down the, um, the surface that's there now because there are, there's a number of issues with it, and then to build it back up to really, if, if it's going to to bring it back up to uh, a state it was God knows how many years ago. Um, and then to have the acrylic, the two coat acrylic surface put down, and he had quotes from Copeland who does tennis courts. Um, so Dennis came up with a with a plan and um, uh, you know with the idea being that if it can be approved, it would go to the, the specs would go out and be bid in February. A general contractor would be uh, awarded in um, by the end of February, and the work would be done beginning in, in April to be done by the end of May. Um, we're meeting again Friday morning to find out exactly where we are, how much of the funding from the Forsyth Improvement, the Capital Improvement Project could, could be allotted uh, to this project going again from taking out the entire surface as it is now, taking out the, the poles and fence fabric and, and uh, putting in a, you know, a, a first class facility up there. So the Forsyth Capital Improvement, was that a grant? Right. And how much was that? The total project is so 354. A little over 3, 304. 304. Yeah. So what's that's the Kimberly grant? grant. So, so what else are you using? Well, that was, uh, you know, the Kimberly project came on in that, the, the tennis courts, the, uh, the bathroom. Oh, so it was designated partly for the tennis courts? Correct. Okay. Right. And then you have Mr. Woods's. Well, that's part of, that's in the Midlands of Valley Tennis Association. He gave that donation. To the Mid Hudson Valley Tennis Association. So that's not earmarked to do the surfacing of that tennis. Well, program. that's part of Mid Hudson Valley Tennis Association's contribution towards okay. the project, because they have to match it up against a grant that uh, mm -hmm. has been received through the USDA. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do I remember hearing there was a donation from a private individual specifically I'm for the uh, tennis court? Yeah, no, you said, you're, you're talking with Mr. Woods. Well, well, yeah, but you kept saying the foresight. Is that a special funding he set up, or is this an addition to it? Well, he, he just explained it. Ron didn't explain it. Wrong. I, I, I want to get it clear. Ron gave yeah. a donation of $20,000 to the Mid Hudson Valley Tennis Association. Okay. They are a partner in the renovation 
That oh, part I understood. All right. I did realize that he gave a 20 to the tennis association. Right. Okay, fine. Yeah. So do you have all the money that you need to do the project? The entire project? Or mm -hmm. are you close I don't think to so. it? No. I don't think so. I think there's a gap. There's a gap. But you're working on bridging that gap. Right. Okay. And again, we're meeting Friday morning again to discuss where possibly some of the work could be done in house. There's, there's parts of the project that can be done in-house. Now, are they going to provide some of the funding that has the tennis association? Oh, yeah. They're going to yeah the money them. that they've raised, plus they use, with the money that they've raised, they've also received a grant from the United States Tennis Association that is specific towards renovation, uh, repair, renovation, rebuilding of tennis courts. And are there, their fundraising efforts ongoing, or are they pretty much done? Are no, I don't think they're, they've stopped. Are, are, are you done with this? I, I, mean, I wasn't yeah. sure. This is a different question. I, just I, have, I have one other question. On this. When you talk about taking uh, the pole and the outer, does that have anything to do with lighting? Is that just strictly fencing? No lighting. Just the fencing. Oh. There's already lighting there. Why? Well, he said he's removing the poles. So I just want to know. Not the light, light poles. poles. Oh, okay. Not the light poles. Then the that poles? What poles? The poles that hold up the fence fabric and go around. Okay. Tony, and so are we done with this? You gonna fix the crack in front of the uh, <laughs> tennis wall there? Oh, well. I mean, the the aging wall. wall. <laughs> that part of it? Um, that not necessarily that for this project. That oh, was for. Uh, and nice. I get lots of That's some ivy. Tony. All right. What page are you going to? Uh, I'm just, are we done with it? I'm just going through here because, so you're done with, I'm just going through here. We're getting round out. We got Midtown. There's no big changes here. I mean, I'm looking at, I'm up to Everett Hodge, Everett Hodge, 139. Is there anything else in between that? All right. Really? So. Well, the only other mm -hmm. thing I, um, on the, uh, 135, right? Uh, the ride-out center, the rest of the repeating system, I think that we can uh, reduce the 423 line item natural gas with the new heating system that's there. Um, reduce and we have, I think we can reduce it. Mm -hmm. No, ride-out center. Page 135. 135, line item 423. Sorry. 423. We have 8,000 budgeted. Um, I think that uh, the new heating system that was put in there last fall is paying dividends, and, and I think we can reduce that safely by at least a thousand dollars. We're taking a look. By how much? At the history. A thousand. For on page one thirty-five. Minus yeah. four twenty-three. To reduce that to seven. Two. Seven or six. Six. six? <laughs> Because so right now, so 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 you, so <laughs> you see what we spent yeah. so far, and that's yeah. through the beginning of November. I mean, if you're on pace next year, you probably drop to six. Yeah. And last winter was very cold, so yeah, yeah, right. it, our numbers are good numbers. Yeah. 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 You're you're thirty one hundred right now. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I calculated. Yeah. I calculated out and you know, what we would need for. The end of the skiing season, which generally we pay the last bill in February, and I think six thousand is a reasonable number to work with. You can work that out. Okay. Yeah. All right. People out. We can yeah. do that. Yeah. Are you running the budget meeting? What's the next phase? And know what? <laughs> I just got questions I want to ask. That's Anything else in there between that cab and that? If I see breaking this off? Hang on, Tom. So I have my attention there to please. Oh, all right. That's more candy. Hey, feel free to step in. Okay. I'm not stepping yeah. in. 
<laughs> you want to rush me? I'm not rushing you. I was just asking Kevin a question. No, rushing you. Okay. 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 Okay, decrease the requested recommended amount of 8000 to 6000 on the natural gas line item number 423 with the savings of $2,000. 7141-423, if you need it specific. And 7141-423. Any question? Motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any reports coming around? Do you have another question? Mm-hmm. What page would that be? We're going to page anything between that, Kevin. Yeah, I'm 139, right? I'm 139. Okay, does anybody else have any questions? Yeah, I do. Thank you. That's okay. Page 135, maintenance of building. It went out wide. Went up almost $4,300. Line 443 on the Rhinox Center. Repeating system customer interchange. <laughs> Where are you with um, Page 135, line 443, maintenance of building went from 945 up to 4000. No, 945 was 2014. All right, well, you're right. The requested was okay, 3000 to 4000. I'm just curious why a thousand more if you're maintaining the same type of supplies, but you have a, you have a line for supplies already. Well, that you know that would include um, uh, bringing in, having to, to fix things within the, the facility, like we just had to do with uh, having fat closet there to change ballasts and lights. That comes under that. That's paid out of there. Um, when we do the the floor. Screen coat the floor uh, that comes out of the, the maintenance of building line item. Um, Plumbers, service calls uh, that, that was a big one this year. It was, in fact, we're. Oh, yeah, plumber. Yeah. Okay, page 136. Bill, you got a question? I, I do. I don't know where it's going. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize to Tony. I don't know where that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> It seems to me like there's a, um, maybe you can answer this, the, the concession stand down at, down at Kingston Point. There's no longer. There's no kitchen in there anymore or anything? So that's just an empty building? Oh, okay. Because in fact, that's where that building is now. Oh, that's where that is now? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was on the other side. Oh, okay. You talking about on the vault outside? Yeah. That's a storage building. No, but there's a fr in the front yeah, of this is not a counter where it opens up. And we could never get anybody, I think, once. But I was somebody. thinking, I mean, that would be like a great idea if, it, if it's still operational for somebody to rent it out for the summer or something. Well, we used to put it out on the bid. I think nobody wants it or something. One year for like $20. I think it was 20 years, and that there's never been a concession on the beach. And now you have the walkway down the river. I don't know, it just seems like, I don't know. I do remember. I do remember. Yeah, but there was a concession on the beach side. Okay, okay, let's move aside. Bill, why don't you um, pursue, at least my if we can open something there for a revenue. Yeah, I mean, is it not? Uh, if it hasn't been there for 20 years, maybe it's something that needs to be. Recycled. I mean, it just seems like it would, even if it's nice street, but whatever, something. Is there like any room in a new building at the beach for something like that? Uh, it's a, it's a nice building. I'm not sure, you know, I, I think we'd almost be better off trying to, um, if we can work something out with, with doctor or something. Yeah, yeah. Food service. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, like the, the, the person who is up in front of a cat oh, right there. Mm -hmm. Pork, pork, what we do? pork, the pork vendor. Pork, right. You know, that. But can we He's down there now. Can they just go down there on their own? No, they're not supposed to. Well, they do. No, no, we no, they charge them. Yeah. Okay, what happened? We had the discussion of the food trucks at a previous budget meeting. Where but this is different, though. This is on city property as opposed to the street. Okay, but they're talking about food trucks. Yeah, it's the same food truck. Yeah. You know, having that as a concession. Not necessarily, but facility. nobody said what food truck was going. Yeah, we did. No. We did. You didn't hear it. We did. Then that was a sidebar conversation, and they're not supposed to happen at the table. Everybody on the council is supposed to know what's going on mm -hmm. to keep this meeting in control. Mm -hmm. But Second you have a question. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You had a question, Bernie, or you just have a statement? No, I had a statement. Raise your hand. So that yeah. was your statement. Well, because there are food trucks doing business down there now. And they're not supposed to be down there doing it, okay? And we did have food vendors, city had a food vendor. They would go out for a bit on the beach side in recent years. Kevin knows that. Yeah. yeah. I used to have that. Yeah. So whether, whether it's something to investigate of putting a, a bid out for a food truck to be there, I mean, that, that is certainly something to consider. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anybody have any idea what would be uh, what would what would we be looking at at a bid for a truck? To, I mean, I have no clue. Well, you don't need to I mean, if, if, that, if the inside, if there's an actual kitchen in there. No, so no, no, we're talking no about kitchen. Not, not doing that. Well, I think that I think that tonight's not the discussion, the discussion for what kind of food truck or what we would get for there. That's something to pursue. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just but curious. It's but it's not part of the budget process right now, so I don't think it's something that we're talking about. We're going to change. For the city to purchase a truck? Or no, no, to, uh, no, to the right. independent yeah. space down here. Million dollars. What are, what are team moving <laughs> on? Okay. I'll do it. 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 i will do Talk about wrap ups. I've given some of those answers already. So, Steve would love to do that. Yes, yeah, he <laughs> <we> will. <laughs> Matt has a question. Yeah, stop it. I do. I do. <laughs> so, um, the environmental education for educated position was cut. I want to know how much it's going to cost. Uh, I see it. It's a few spots in the budget. Um, how much so, in three different you? locations. So, right. 7020 administration. And that was so the question Seventy-one forty-three. And it's mm. it's in the seventy-two forty uh, Zoom Nature Center. So, John, how much will it cost to um, what's what's the cost to reinstate it? With that topic at the eleventh hour today, Mike Goldberg from the Family sent me an email. I sent it to everybody at the 11th hour after I got it. <coughs> um, and I copied, I printed it at home, copied it, it came out blurry, and it's even blurrier when I copied it. So you're welcome to it if you didn't see your email. I have an unblurry one. No, I like that. <laughs> Mine's pretty much not blurry, but as I copied it, it got blurrier. You want to read that one? Yeah. So that was to be reinstated. What's the um fifty three thousand seven fifty nine. Fifty three thousand seven fifty nine. And what page line? What page? Well that, well, that, that would be to restore to the original requested amount with at the at the step it was on. Okay. But to bring it to step one would be and I don't know what the intent is, but to bring it to a step one would cost less. And what would and that, what, what would that difference be? Do you know what that difference would be? Approximately? I, I don't. Um, Four or five thousand dollars, maybe? Yeah, I think okay. it's a step so one. So yeah. amount of money. Yeah, I mean, okay. just shy of 50. Okay. What so was your we, first figure? 53, 759. So, I, I, I'm assuming, Kevin, <laughs> this is a dumb question, but I'll ask anyway. You didn't ask for that <laughs> position to be eliminated? No, I had it for the trust fund. And, and do you think that that's an important position? And if so, why? And um, do you, do you, you know, would you want the position this, you know, the, the next year? 
losing a position like that, uh, it affects programming in all aspects. Uh, the position has, from uh, weekend, Friday evening, weekend kayaking, to programming with our school groups, to programming at the Hodge Center, to programming with our senior population, um, there's an impact. And, and uh, it's going to be affected. And, you know, if, uh, if the position is not in the budget, we also have to take into consideration uh, revenue line items that are affected by that. No, I'm sure I'll have more, but so that was my question was regard to this and environment the program operational specialist. I'm assuming that's the great title. And you would have seen it's fifty three thousand seven hundred to fifty nine <coughs> at this step of this uh, right. step. Yeah. So Kevin, as you say that it's important and important to have this line on it, right? And what is some of the jump in Job, what is this job? How that was included in that community? Grant writing? Grant writing is that yeah, Can I interrupt for a moment? Because I actually have the job title rec requisition here of what it is. <coughs> um, and if I can share that with the council, that would might help you out. Um, this position conducts and manages environmental educational projects, courses, activities, and exhibits, performs grant administration for the Parks and Recreation Department, DPW in the area of recycling, and the Engineering Department in the area of stormwater green infrastructure, may supervise the Hodge Center staff. The work is performed under the general supervision of the Director of the Parks and Recreation. And then it goes on to say what the typical work activities are. Prepares applications for funding assistance to grant programs and prepares contracts when outside agencies oversee funded projects. Reviews a wide range of departmental programs and policies in an effort to assess the effectiveness for determining possible program and policy alternatives. Provides input and expertise in evaluating violations of local and state environmental quality codes. Develops and implements special environmental projects for the department within the city of Kingston. Manages the Everett Hodge Center, including day-to-day -day operation, communication with community partners, and alarm company. Budget preparation for the Edger Everett Hodge Center. Prepare public nature-based programs throughout the year. Coordinate recycling efforts to ensure compliance with all DEC regulations and for full necessary solid waste reporting. Responsible for maintaining web-based communication for the department, including email <coughs> news blasts, Facebook posts, website development, and updates on the city websites. Implements, updates, and troubleshoot the ActiveNet online parks program and facility reservation software. Create programs, fee schedules, waivers, rosters, and management of park reservation and permit process. Answer phones, operate general office equipment, such as <coughs> computer, printer, copier, and fax. Perform a variety of administrator activities to support programs. And then it goes on to say what the required knowledge, skills, and abilities are and what the minimum qualifications are, promotional qualifications, and special requirements for acceptance of employment. So that's what the position is. And I must ask with that, with this, if this one position does all this, yeah. what does the other position do and what do you do? If this one person does all this, and there's two people that have this job and you, I'm not sure what the other person or you do because this is everything here. Everything. If you'd like to read Julia's job description, it's here. You can check that out. Well, this was the same job description for the application of those two jobs when this was created. This was what was the requisition job posting when both applicants posted, and this is what it was based off of. That was the promotional job that we received in October of 2014. You can see the date the Civil Service Office created that job um, for me. The job title that I just handed you, which is the okay. Well, this is what civil service has on record. record. Yeah, okay. and that that is my current job, but that is different than the, my coworker who has the job title of environmental educator one, which you can see was created by the civil service office, I believe, in 2007, um, which was the job that I previously held before I was promoted by the current administration. And so you can see if you read through it, there are unique differences between what the environmental educator position does 
and what my title currently does and what I do with Kevin in the administration of our department. I see that they're similar activities and there may be a few unique, but I don't see the need to replace a position that does all this, does that, and does that. I'm not sure I understand where the amount of work, some being shifted to DPW, how it entails three people. And it was mentioned in the past too that if this is an educator, an educator should go to a school to be. And then it was also stated that in upstate New York, no municipality has any environmental educator, no less too. So the position was eliminated and the position really doesn't need to be filled. Based on that, we have to do more with less. And I think with you as a director and the other person in that position that the work can be divvied out more so to do more with less. Julie? Would you mind reading my full job description? Sure. Right here? No, I have a question. I this is an entry level professional who develops, conducts, and manages environmental educational projects, courses, activities, and exhibits. May supervise program, operational, and volunteer staff. The work is performed under the supervision of the director of the parks and recreation. T typical work activities develops, conducts, and evaluates environmental educational courses and programs, including preparing lesson plans for a wide range of ages and groups, developing teaching aids and exhibits, conducting courses evaluating the effectiveness of programs and revising and modifying courses in response to program needs, change deficiencies in the need of particular groups, develops, prepares, and revises non-teaching and environmental education programs, materials, audiovisual programs, and exhibits by conducting research, develops themes and exhibits, preparing and writing informational material and illustrations for publication, and maintaining and modifying exhibits, publications, audiovisual programs, and all other material plans and conducts workshops for teachers and staff about environmental education programs and concepts, acquires catalogs and maintains specimens and other teaching materials for programs, plans and conducts special events and course, courses in support of environmental programs including recruiting volunteers, planning, organizing, and publicizing events, contracting for equipment, performers, and presenters, and purchasing lands and preparing materials. Develops interpretive programs for an assigned area or facility, recruits, trains, and supervises paid staff and volunteers, researches and surveys natural and environmental history and concerns, manages and administers collections and exhibits, works with representatives from schools, colleges, organizations, and the public to promote the facilities and programs, performs a variety of administrative activities to support programs, then goes on about the required knowledge, skills, and ability and the minimum qualifications. You're welcome. Tony? My question is, is that what is what is the, the position that is was eliminated? What is the job title again? Environmental Program Operational Specialist. Specialist. And what is Julie's job title? Environmental Educator One. So we addressed it that the position that's being cut is not an educated job, it's a specialist job. The position that is still kept in the budget is the educator job. So the, my question is to Steve, can you give me all that verbiage? Can you tell this committee, the council, what some of your, what you do? Sure. Yeah, so out of my job, if you take it uh, broken down by percentage, 50% of my work um, is at the Everett Hodge Community Center, which means that I'm responsible for making sure that that building, which operates um, as a community center and operates an after-school program on a daily basis for over 100 at-risk inner-city kids, is open, is maintained properly, and I work with my supervisor uh, to make sure that the building can meet the needs of our community. And so with that, um, I am on-site, um, I manage the program, I manage the partnerships and contracts that the city has with groups like Family of Woodstock and others, Cornell Cooperative Extension, and so we as a department manage those grants um, to be able to make sure that um, that building can be open, and my presence on-site um, is counted into our staff to student ratios, and I needed on-site um, to be able to have that program 